Hi guys, I'm Heath Manning of Manning Cues. This video is going to be on track lines. Track lines are useful for banking and for kicking. This video is primarily going to be uh, just on the kicking portion of track lines and what a pro sees or what a very advanced player sees when they get to the table. You see a whole bunch of balls on the table right now and you're thinking, what's going on? What's going on is track lines. What you should see when you get up to a table. You can see on the table that I've got cue balls in the corner pockets and I've got then one balls, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight diamonds on the length of the table and there's four across. There's many more balls at that end of the table and I'm going to explain to you why. This video is going to show you the track lines on the table that you can implement into kicking and banking which I will do in my next videos. Right now I'm going to place just an object ball in the corner pocket. I'm then going to throw a ball into position in front of the side pocket. We want to figure out how to kick that to the corner pocket. Right now you're thinking, that's pretty simple. Well, let's see how simple it is when you actually get down to the advanced num numbers on the table and the technical part of billiards. It's simple to say I'm at the fourth diamond. This object ball is in the corner pocket. I'm four diamonds away. So I'm going to aim at the second diamond over there and I should make my contact. Most times you will. Sometimes you won't. Sometimes you'll hit past the object ball and you'll say to yourself, how did I do that? Did I aim wrong? No. You didn't aim wrong. You calculated wrong. To calculate a kick shot, you need to give the cue ball a value and the object ball a value. When you're kicking across the table, you have to find the track line that the cue ball is on natural to kick in this pocket with little or no spin. Spin, English, is trouble. It's not, um, you're going to find that it's not reliable and that it's very inaccurate. What we're going to do is we're going to find out what line this is on. When we started, we thought this would be four diamond to the second diamond equals zero. It's half the distance. Well, let's just see if that's accurate. Let's put my tip of my cue on the second diamond. And let's bring my butt of the cue to where the imaginary diamond would be in the side pocket. Well, you'll see that my cue ball is not under my stick, so it is not on that track line. If it were here, it would be, but it's not. So that is not my contact point. If I were to aim at that contact point from where my cue ball is now, okay, what would happen? What would happen is you wouldn't be on the natural track line to the corner pocket and you'd be aiming right of, to the right of where you should actually be aiming and your cue ball would hit this rail and maybe nick this and put it in the pocket. You won't hit it full. I'm going to shoot that for you now. If I shoot at the second diamond over there, I hit the rail, but then I hit my ball. Yes, I made my ball, but I didn't do what I wanted to do. I didn't go and hit that ball full and make that in the corner pocket as I saw it in my mind. So when I'm here, I know I'm at the fourth diamond, okay, but I'm not going to give that a value of 40. When I'm kicking a shot, whichever end of the table you're kicking to is going to be zero in the corner pocket where you want to kick. If this is zero and we count up the table, the first diamond has a value of 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. In between these diamonds are 10 increments. 
if this is 10 and this is 20, this is 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. All the way around the table, there's increments between every diamond. That's why when you're watching a professional game of pool, you'll see a player make a kick shot and hit exactly the side of the object ball that he wants or she wants. They will know exactly where they're going to be contacting the object ball. They're not guessing. So if I have to give this an accurate value to kick here to find the natural track line, this would be 10, 20, 30, 40. If I point my tip at the 20 value over there, this is 40 here. That rail is a mirror image of this rail. You don't give the cue ball a value off of that rail. You give the cue ball a value off the long rail. So if I'm on a 40, 20, 0 track line, that's going to hit that ball full, but I'm not. So if I point the butt of my cue, now remember these diamonds are in line. So you want to make sure that you assign the cue ball a value when the cue stick is coming through the cue ball in line with these diamonds, then you can give it an accurate value. So if I, if this is 40, this is 41, this is 42, if I put the butt of my cue over 42, that means half of that's 21. So if I am over there at 21, now my stick is right over my object ball. So if I aim my object ball, or my cue ball, sorry, at 21, I should go over and hit my object ball. On a good day, you'll hit the ball full as you want it. On a bad day, you're going to miss. On a great day, you're going to make the shot. Let's try another one. Let's put this back up here. And let's throw another ball out on the table. Let's throw it out in the middle of the table. Because it's easy to judge a ball when it's along the rail. Let's find the track line for this shot now. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to count up. We're kicking. When I'm at the table right now, I know I'm going to be kicking this direction. So I'm kicking to the right. So the pocket I want to kick in is zero. The corner pocket across from it is also zero. And this is both 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, and 80 all the way up. Because we're kicking on this angle, you can see that my cue is coming back close to 70. Okay, well I know half of 70 is 35, so if I point my tip over at 35 and bring this back to 70, you can see that I'm not on that line. I can then find another natural at 60 to 30. I can see that I'm still not on that line, closer. So if I come say, here's 65, half of 65, is 32 and a half. So if I point my tip at 32 and a half and I come to 65, well, I'm right over it. So if I get down and I shoot at 32 and a half, I now confidently know I'm going over and hitting that. That was a perfect stroke. Even though I scratched, that was a perfectly aimed shot because I hit it full. I hit where I aimed. And that makes you feel excellent. If you try this system, it will work for you. If it's not working for you, you may be hitting too hard. You may be using too much English. When I say to you, use no English or a half a tip or a quarter of a tip of English, I'm using 11.75 millimeter tip. If you're using a 12.75, which is the normal, you will require more English because the smaller tip gives you a lot more English on contact. The cue ball is much bigger to a smaller uh, tip. So now what happens, we've done one along the rail, we've done one um, out in the middle of the table, now let's get down to the end of the table and let's figure this out again. We're still kicking this direction, so this is still going to be my target pocket of zero. We're still going to count up like normal, 10, 20. Now you always count on the long rail, the rail you're standing behind. Never count across the table. 
So this is 0, this is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. When we come around the corner pocket, we're not going straight anymore. So now we're jumping by 20s on the diamond. This is 80, 100, 120, 140. In between is 90, 110, 130, and 150. Now, every track line on the table, okay, right now, okay, looking at the table, there's over 150 track lines, okay? If I'm at 10, the track line is 5. If I'm at 20, the track line is 10. 30, 15, 40, 20, 50, 25. 60, 30, 70, 35, 80 to 40, 90 to 45, 100 goes to 50, 110 goes to 55, getting close to the cue ball, 120 goes to 60, past the cue ball, okay, and so on. That's why this is a mirror image of the long rail, because it gives you the halfway mark and a accurate aim point to make your kicks. So right now, I'm going to figure out where my cue ball is. Even though I'm coming from the end rail, if you can remember the values, you will be successful at making your shots. So if I come around the corner, I know this is 100, I know this is 110, I know this is 120. If I go 120, 60, Okay, that's close to the cue ball, but we're still far enough away. Um, it's not under my stick, so let's come back. Let's go to 55 and come over the middle here. I put my finger here so I can get an, get an accurate, between 110 and 100, between 100 and 120 is 110. So I can come here and say, okay, I'm closer. So if I go up to 112, that's going to be uh, 56 over there. If I come up to 114, that's going to be 57. And now I'm over my cue ball. So if I aim here at 57, I go down and accurately hit my shot. I'm sorry, I just dropped the ball. So I accurately hit my shot. You do not have to be a pro player to make these shots. All you need to do is have the knowledge to be able to identify the values on the table. In my next videos, I'm going to be showing you how to kick off of um, different positions. For example, if your object ball is here, and your cue ball is on the first section of the short rail under 40. I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to show you how to do that when your cue ball has a value past 40 because those values on the uh, end rail change. I'm going to show you how to kick from a long rail position to a long rail position how to formulate that. It's not just half the distance. It's not giving that a value and saying, okay, I'm four diamonds away, I'm going to ha aim half the distance. That's not accurate. I'm going to show you how to aim off the end rail to a ball here. And once we've gone through those videos, I'm going to show you how to two rail kick and three rail kick and four rail kick and five rail kick accurately. I've put in the time to study many different systems. I didn't create this system. And I've received comments on my other videos saying, you know, this is a copy of someone else's system. Well, you're absolutely right. All these systems are out there. And I've put out the money to study each one. I found out the systems that work. I found out the systems to be accurate. And I found out the systems that are not accurate. I've compared them, I've worked them on the table, and I'm going to put together these videos for you guys for free, for you supporting me at manningcues.com. I can't thank you enough for supporting me and buying your products from manningcues.com. 
You've made uh, my business uh, successful so far, and I'm going to keep supporting you guys back. Have a look for my videos coming out soon after this one because you're going to be blown away. These systems work. You're going to want to test them, and your game is going to elevate. I'm Heath Manning from Manning Cues. Thanks, guys.